good day class 11 the students who are taking political science this is chapter 1 constitution why and how we go to the first point it says constitution allows coordination and assurance we are members of a large group the members of this group have many different characteristics like they belong to different religious groups hindus muslims christians sikhs etc and some don't profess any religion atheists the members pursue different professions have different abilities have different food and dress habits some are old some are young many have different customs and traditions speak different languages and so on these members are likely to have disputes over different issues like for example how much wealth and property one is allowed to own or inherit if education be made compulsory for every child so these are the questions that can arise that can lead to disputes can we answer and solve these issues we can but there will be a variety of answers and also opinions now everyone in this group are dependent on each other in more ways than one they require the cooperation of each other and in society we are dependent on other people to satisfy our different needs the general agreement is that members of this group must live together and they must agree to some basic rules now again a question arises why are basic rules required to be followed by all imagine what would happen to our country which has such a diverse population as well as different geographical structures like hilly areas the plains the coastal plains the deccan plateau region the sundarbans and therefore this diverse geographical structure of india makes it all the more difficult every individual will be insecure the majority members will have the upper hand what would this majority group do to the minorities take for example sri lanka 
which you have done in class 10. The Sinhalas were in majority and the government followed majoritarian policies. And what was the result? A civil war. A civil war that lasted over three decades. And it ruined the social, political and economical conditions of the country. So if there were no basic rules, the minorities would be suppressed by the majority. So just think. And if you reason out, the results will be shocking. Therefore, for the members to live in peace and harmony, basic rules are a must. These basic rules are publicly announced so that all members will know and will try to achieve a minimal degree of coordination. These basic rules must be enforceable. It means all members have to follow these basic rules. These rules are legally enforceable. That is, if members do not follow these basic rules, they will be punished. Therefore, we get our first function of a constitution. A constitution is to provide a set of basic rules that allow the minimal coordination amongst members of a society. So basic rules are important and if they are legally enforced, meaning if people break these basic rules, do not follow these basic rules, they will be punished. The second, specification of decision-making powers. Who has the authority to form and enforce these basic rules? Let us ask a simple question. What is a constitution? It is a body of fundamental principles according to which a state is constituted and governed. Now, we can ask, who gets to decide what the laws governing the society should be? Some may want one party, some may want another party. What do we usually think? We usually think the rules we want everyone to follow and live by where there is peace and harmony are the best. All opinions are not the same. Others think differently that their rules are the best. Therefore, this leads to disputes. These disputes can lead to unrest and finally the disintegration of the country. So these disputes must be solved. Now, who gets to decide? The answer lies in the constitution. It specifies the basic allocation of power in society. It decides 
who gets to decide and form these basic rules. However, there are many answers like in a monarchical state, the monarch decides. In some constitutions, like old USSR, one single party was given the power to decide. But in a democratic constitution, please note, in a democratic constitution, the people get to decide. It is the people that decide these basic rules. Now another question arises. How will the people decide? Should they express their preferences by electing representatives? How should these representatives be elected? Now the question arises here is, if the people get to decide, does it literally mean that people or all the adult members have to gather, that is from all over the country, gather at one particular place? It is not possible. This also you have read earlier. It is not possible. That's why the question over arises. How will the people decide? Should they express their preferences by electing representatives? And how should these representatives be elected? You know, our Indian constitution specifies that parliament gets to decide laws and policies. Parliament is organized in a particular manner. Another question arises. Who has the authority to enact the laws? If parliament has the authority, there must be a law that gives this authority to parliament. This is the function of the constitution. It is an authority that constitutes the government. Therefore, we get our second function of the constitution. That is, the constitution specifies who has the power to make decisions in a society. It decides how the government will be constituted. We move to the third. Limitations on the powers of the government. Earlier, you have read and a question had arisen. Can the Prime Minister rule the country according to his whims and fancies or as he likes? That was the question. And the answer lies in the Constitution. So you heard too. Many questions arise like Laws passed which prohibits a certain group from practicing their religion or prohibits that clothes of a certain color not be worn. Certain groups are forbidden from singing certain songs and so on. Now a certain group of people have decided who had the authority to make decisions. But 
they faced opposition. As this group thought that the laws passed were unfair, though they were passed by a government that was formed by a certain procedure. Therefore, this opposition checks the powers of the government. They have to answer. So we get a third function of the constitution. A constitution sets some limits on what a government can impose on its citizens. These limits are fundamental in the sense that government may never trespass them. Constitutions limit the powers of the government in many ways. I give you one that is through an opposition. This is done by specifying certain fundamental rights that all citizens possess. Now this is the second way in which the powers of the government are restricted or limited. Which no government can ever be allowed to violate. That means there are certain fundamental rights given by the constitution to the citizens. And these rights can never be violated by the government. Most constitutions protect a basic cluster of rights. Citizens will have the right to some basic liberties like freedom of speech, freedom of will, freedom of association, freedom to conduct a trade or business and so on. So we have a number of fundamental rights and these rights cannot be violated by the government. If they are violated, we can always go to court because these rights are mentioned in the constitution and they are enforceable. But remember, rights can be limited during times of national emergency. That also you have read. The constitution specifies the conditions under which these rights may be withdrawn or suspended. We go to the next. Aspirations and goals of a society. Many older constitutions limited the allocation of decision-making powers and setting some limits to government power. But modern constitutions like the Indian constitution provides a framework for the government to do certain positive things to express the aspirations and goals of society. Societies have deep inequalities which we have seen in the first point. And these do not set limits on the power of the government. So here, the inequalities should not limit the powers of the government. They will have to empower the government to take positive measures to overcome forms of inequality. India aspires to be a nation free of caste discrimination. 
the government will have to be empowered to take all necessary and positive steps to achieve this goal let's take an example you have read about the apartheid in south africa what was apartheid it was the racial discrimination that was so unique to south africa the discrimination was done on the basis of skin color blacks and whites blacks were the africans then also you had the colored and the third were the indian migrants people who immigrated to south africa they were not europeans they were not white skinned and therefore these three groups fell into one basic group blacks and therefore they were discriminated against there also you have read like this discrimination led to a term called segregation everything was totally separate even the very washrooms hotels churches was separated the fight for apartheid continued thousands of blacks and colored people were executed nelson mandela and seven other ministers were jailed given life imprisonment but the blacks the colored and the indians who immigrated to south africa began fighting for their rights and finally the white government realized that they could not rule by these repressive measures so the blacks and the whites sat at the same table and formed a new constitution the new constitution gave to the government the power to end racial discrimination the constitution enshrines the aspirations of a society the framers thought that each individual in society must have all that is necessary for the citizens to lead a life of minimal dignity and social self respect the indian constitution enables the government to take positive welfare measures which are legally enforceable the fundamental rights and the directive principles of state policy advise the government to fulfill certain aspirations of the people this gives us a fourth function of a constitution to enable the government to fulfill the aspirations of a society and create conditions for a just society we move on to the next sub topic it says fundamental identity of a people most importantly a constitution expresses 
the fundamental identity of a people. This means that the people as a collective entity comes into being only through the constitution. A basic set of norms is agreed upon that is how one should be governed and who should be governed that one forms a collective identity. Earlier, a person had many identities. Now, by agreeing to certain basic norms and principles, one constitutes one's basic political identity. Secondly, constitutional norms are the overall framework within which one pursues individual aspirations, goals and freedoms. The constitution sets stern limitations upon what one may or may not do. So the constitution gives one a moral identity. Constitutions around the world differ in many respects, but also share a good deal. Modern constitutions create a form of government that is democratic and claim to protect certain basic rights. They are different in the way they incorporate concepts of natural identity. The Indian constitution does not make ethnic identity a criterion for citizenship. That means you do not have to belong to an ethnic group in order to be a citizen of India. Therefore, different nations embody different concepts of relationships between different regions of a nation. This relationship constitutes the national identity of a country. Students, go through this video. I have tried to make it as simple as possible so that you can understand. Go through this video two to three times, but remember, make sure that you watch this video at different intervals of time. If you're watching it two to three times, the first time you watch it, it's okay. The second time, there should be a gap of two hours or three hours. The reason being, look after your eyes. Your eyesight is impossible. Otherwise, you will come in for headaches. Your eyes will begin to water, the pain, and then you will have a problem. Stay home, stay safe, and concentrate on the work you are doing. I will be sending you the PDF of the exercises. Please copy them in your political science notebook, a registered type notebook and keep it ready.